Kids, uh, welcome back. We're so excited to be doing week two of all the fields with you. And we want to first give a shout out to all of you who've entered in to win Bible Bucks for this week using that hashtag all the fields. So let's find out who our winners are right now. All right, first winner we have is Ariel Littlefield. Congratulations, Ariel. We're gonna get some Bible Bucks in the mail to you. And our second winner is Jenna and Quinn Schiefelbein. Congrats, Jenna and Quinn. Our third winner is Lexi Allen. Congratulations, Lexi. Awesome job using that hashtag, all the feels. Um, and remember to do that again this week. Now, like I said, this is our second week of all the feels. And this week we're talking about anger. And we're gonna be using some angry birds today. In fact, Penelope, who may have a bit of an anger management problem, I don't know, asked if she could launch an angry bird right now from the top of the church roof. So we're gonna do it. Um, and in fact, she herself may want it. Oh, that, that's right. That's right. She said it. When pigs fly, she wants to do it. So we're going to do it. And after that, guys, we are going to jump right into worship. So first, let's launch an angry bird or two and Penelope herself. Here we go, guys. By the way, shout out to look at, check this guy out. Pastor Luke's here, along with Pastor Becky, launching our angry birds with Penelope. All right, here we go. Penelope, you got this? She's ready. She says she's born ready for this.
Waters kids, this is Pastor Becky and we are in week two of our All the Feels series. Last week we had an awesome service with Pastor Nora where we talked all about fear and how we don't have to be afraid or worry because if God's going to take care of the birds and the flowers and everything else around us, he's going to take care of us too because that's just who God is and he loves us so much. So we're going to continue on in that series today and we're talking about anger. Ooh, raise your hand if you've ever been angry before. I know I have. Maybe you've seen the movie Inside Out. When I think about anger, I think about that guy right there and how angry he gets and how fire comes shooting out of his head because he gets so angry, right? So my question for you guys is what makes you angry? What makes you angry? What makes you mad where you're just fuming because you are so angry you're so upset so i thought it would be fun to check in with some of our friends so let's hear from them right now these are three things that make me mad when my siblings attack me distance learning and when my mom says i can't play xbox Grr! there are three things that make me mad when it rains outside and i want to play and when my brother breaks my toys and when he bothers me when I'm reading. When my brother keeps making fun of me and when dad keeps saying, we'll do that tomorrow, we'll do that tomorrow. When we're working on my dollhouse's kitchen, we only got the fridge and the dishwasher and the stove and the oven done, but we never got the rest of the stuff. We got one whole room done and when I get the whole page wrong at school. Everything. <laughs> Having to go to bed. In my room. What makes me mad is when I have loads of homework and the coronavirus. What makes me mad is when I can't play outside. My thing, the thing that makes me mad is not being able to go to school and, and helping with the church nursery. What makes me mad is when my sister picks on me. What, well, what makes me mad is when my brother picks on me. We read our own minds. <laughs> my brothers make me mad when they steal my stuff. I don't like it when my brothers mess with me. I don't like when mom takes my iPad away. <laughs> what makes me mad when my sister doesn't play with me and that <laughs> my cat bites me. <laughs> um, things that make me mad are when my sister and brothers come in my room and just take stuff. Um, another thing that makes me mad is when we promise something and someone breaks that promise. Um, if someone's trying to fight me, um, I get mad and my cat scratch me, um, scratch me, um, I get mad at her and I get her spankings. Thanks for sharing, Waters Kids, about all those reasons that make us angry, right? And they vary from all kinds of things. Even right now, in the middle of this virus going around, we can get angry with those closest to us that we live with, right? And we can get angry about the things that we can't do right now, like go to the store or play sports and things, or birthday parties, whatever it is that we're not able to do. Those things can cause us to get angry at times. And we're gonna take a look at a Bible story today where some people in the Bible got angry. And I think we can all relate to that because we all get angry from time to time. Now our story is found in the book of Exodus, which is in the Old Testament. It goes Genesis, then Exodus. And we're going to start in chapter 17. Now our story is going to go over a few chapters. So instead of reading all of those chapters to you, we are going to watch a Saddleback Kids video here in just a minute. But if you want to follow along, even when the video is going on, Exodus chapter 17 is what you're looking for. Now, our story today is about a guy named Moses, and God had really special plans 
for Moses. And one of those things was he was going to lead the Israelites, these people, to the promised land. He was going to lead them to freedom. So he was going to lead them out into the wilderness, out of Egypt. And that's what's happening in our story where we pick it up. Now, the people, the Israelites, they got really angry with Moses because they didn't understand what was happening. And they also got really angry with God. So we're going to go ahead and check out that video right now to find out why are the Israelites so angry with Moses and with God. So let's check that video out now. This is Moses, hey. who was an Israelite born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? Moses, however, grew up in the palace of the Pharaoh, the very man who was enslaving the Israelite people. When Moses grew up, he made a big mistake uh -oh. and fled Egypt uh -oh. to live with the Midianites. Uh. But God called Moses back to Egypt ah. to deliver his people with the help of his brother Aaron. Ooh. After God showed his miraculous power in Egypt, he led the Israelites through the Red Sea and towards the Promised Land. They followed God who showed himself as a cloud by day and fire by night. As God led them through the wilderness, the Israelites became thirsty and hungry. Uh. They complained to Moses and Aaron uh. and said, if only we had died in Egypt. Uh. God said to Moses that he would provide for his people. Hey. Each morning they awoke and found manna for the day. What's that? And each night God gave them meat. <laughs> the people were still thirsty and they were mad at Moses saying, did you bring us out here to die of thirst? Yeah. So Moses cried out to God, and God told Moses to strike a rock, and water came flowing out of it for the people to drink. And so the Lord provided for his people's needs. Wow, those Israelites were hangry. Have you ever heard that term before? They were so hungry that they were angry. They were hangry. But in all seriousness, the Israelites were angry because they didn't understand God's plan. And sometimes I think that happens to us too. We don't understand the bigger picture or the plan that God has in store for us. And even right now, as we're facing this pandemic and this virus is going around, like I said earlier, we can get frustrated and angry with those living closest to us. Tensions rise when we're living in close quarters. And I know for, for me sometimes, and maybe even for you, we can get angry when we don't understand. Maybe we don't understand why mom and dad said we needed to do something. Maybe we get angry because we don't understand why our brother and sister did what they did or took what they did. Whatever the reason is for getting angry, the Bible has something that it wants to show us or tell us about how we can handle our anger. So if you have your Bible still with you, we're going to turn to Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Philippians 2, verse 3. And this is what it says. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Wow. You know, I never related anger to being selfish. But really, when we get angry, it's because we want our desires. We want what we want more than what someone else wants. And sometimes we get angry because we want to be right. We don't want to be wrong. And that's a selfish way to think and a way to act. And this verse is challenging us to humble ourselves and value others more than ourselves. So even when we're angry, we can still make it a priority to put others' needs and desires and wants above our own. Wow, that sounds like a challenge. That sounds like it would be really tricky to do, but here's the thing, God promises to help us and we don't have to do that alone. And I figured out a fun way to help us remember what to do when we're feeling angry. And I'm gonna share that with you guys right now. All right, so I have some angry birds here with us today to remind us 
what we've been talking about. And my tagline for you that I want you to remember is don't be an angry bird. You might be feeling angry for a variety of reasons, but don't be an angry bird. So we're gonna take a look at what does that mean to not be an angry bird. So go ahead and check this out with me. First of all, your eyes. Do you have angry eyes? Are you glaring at people? Are you rolling your eyes when your mom and dad ask you to do something? That's one way that we show we are being an angry bird. What about your words? Are you cutting people down? Are you saying negative and hurtful things because you're feeling mad? That's being an angry bird. What about throwing objects? Are you throwing things that aren't yours? Are you throwing something as a way to give it back to somebody? That's being an angry bird. And then lastly, is your what's your body doing? Is your body out of control? Are you throwing a temper tantrum? Are you throwing yourself down on the floor? That's showing that we are also being an angry bird. So instead of being an angry bird, remember these cool down strategies. So let's go ahead and check these out as well. These are some things you can do if you're feeling like you're becoming an angry bird. One, maybe you need to find a quiet space, a nest if you will, to calm down. Maybe that nest is your room and you just want a quiet time on your bed. Maybe it's in a closet. Maybe it's sitting on a front step outside because you just need some fresh air. Number two, balloon breathing. Practicing taking in deep breaths and then exhaling them out. Let's try it now. And you keep doing that until you feel yourself calming down and you start to feel a little less angry. Remember the boomerang bird. When we say or do things and we send that out, those things can come back to hurt us even. And we don't always think about that when we're being angry, but remember that as you are dealing with your anger. And lastly, remember the mighty eagle. Maybe you've reached a point in your anger where you need some help and you need to talk it through with someone. Maybe that's mom or dad or grandma or grandpa, aunt or uncle, an older sibling or even a friend. And remember, you can always talk to God. God knows everything already anyways, and he would love to talk that through with you. And you could simply say, God, I'm so angry at my brother or sister for breaking my tower I built. Will you please help me deal with my anger? And God will surely help you with that. Now, like I said, we can talk to God and we can talk to him about our anger. And I think we should talk to God right now to say, God, will you help us? If we get angry this week, will you help us deal with that? Will you help us remember what the Bible says to not be selfish and to humble ourselves, valuing others more than ourselves? And that's a big task. So let's ask God for his help this week. Let's pray. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for this reminder in the Bible. Thank you for showing us that we get angry just like the Israelites got angry with Moses and with you, God, but that you are there to help us through that. Help us to remember to not be an angry bird. Help us to remember those cool down strategies, but most importantly, help us to not be selfish and to humble ourselves and value others more than ourselves. And help us do that even in the midst of feeling angry. God, will you help us with that this week? In Jesus' name, amen. Great job, you guys. Let's get ready to do our review game challenge. And here's a fun little surprise for you. It has to do with Angry Birds. All right, Waters kids, it's time for our review game question. So we have five questions for you and they are true or false questions today. So hopefully you were paying attention to the video and our lesson today. So you can go ahead and do your best shot at these questions now. Go ahead.
job, Waters kids. Now it's time for the game part of our review game challenge. And today you're going to need one balloon, or you could play with the pew if you want. And if your parents say it's okay, a Sharpie, right? So you're going to take your balloon and you are going to turn it into your very own Angry Bird. And have fun with that. Use your artistic and creative abilities to turn your balloon into an Angry Bird. This is where it might be fun to have more than one balloon then you can have more than one Angry Bird for your game. Now, we have a couple Angry Bird challenges for you today. Number one is to see if you can keep your Angry Bird off of the ground for one minute's time. Tapping the balloon, your Angry Bird like this, keeping it off the ground while moving around the room. Then you can challenge someone else in your family to see if they can keep their Angry Bird off the ground for a minute as well. This is where if you have more than one balloon, the next time around you could add two three, even four Angry Birds, and see how many you can keep off the ground in one minute's time. Have fun with that. And number two challenge that you could do is divide your room that you're in in half and also divide your family into two teams. And it's kind of like volleyball, so you're going to hit your Angry Bird back and forth. Now, if the Angry Bird lands on the ground on your side of the room, it's a point for the other team. And if the Angry Bird lands on a piece of furniture, like a table or a couch or a chair, and doesn't quite hit the ground, but it stops moving, then it is a point for the other team as well. You could play to three points, five points, 10 points, you guys decide, but have fun with this challenge this week together. But also as we go about our week, remember don't be an Angry Bird, right? But instead, humble yourselves and value others more than yourselves. I hope you guys have an awesome week. I hope you have fun with this Angry Bird Challenge and we will see you soon. Bye you guys, see you later. That was pretty awesome. She came flying off the roof. I think Pastor Becky and Pastor Nora launched her off of the roof. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining us for service. We had an awesome time. Thank you to Pastor Becky for a great message. And remember, she talked about this week, don't be an angry bird, right? So, hey, if you want to win some Bible Bucks, you can comment in this video, hashtag all the feels for a chance to win some Bible Bucks. Well, thanks so much for joining us. We will see you next week. See ya.